Hello, today we are going to talk about planets and astrology. So if you've ever done your birth chart or your natal chart, you know that planets and their placement um, affects your personality according to astrology, and each planet symbolizes a different component of life or a type of energy or... um, psychologically speaking, a need or drive. So we're just going to go through those today. And I want to start by saying to a lot of people say, you know, oh, you're this way because your chart says this, or you're that way because your chart says that. And I don't think that's true at all. It's just uh, some interesting information, I guess, to consider. So With that said, uh, first I'm going to list all the planets, of which, for our purposes, there are ten. So we don't include Earth on this list, and we do include Pluto, and the Sun is here as well. So, start with Sun, Moon, Mercury, Then we have Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Uranus, whenever you want. Neptune and finally Pluto and each of these has its own symbol so I'll add that now and then I'll um, start talking about what each one represents I think we should title it too, no? Mm. Okay, so the sun goes like this, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. Saturn. Some of these you'll see different in different resources too, so I'm just doing the ones I know. Then we have Uranus and Neptune and Pluto. The symbol for that one can also be this weird kind of footed P. But, uh, yeah, these are the ones I'm going to use. Alright, and really quickly I'll go through um, the very basics and then give you more detail on each one. So the sun is like how you are. The moon is how you feel. Mercury is how you think. Venus is how you love, Mars how you act, we have Jupiter is how you grow, Saturn how you achieve, it's kind of like a, well we'll get into that, it's like a task master planet, Uh, Uranus is how you evolve, yeah, so funny, you guys. <laughs> and uh, Neptune, how you dream. And Pluto is how you empower. Oh, 
Okay. So, um, the sun, we're going to put here. Uh, it's your unchanging essence. That's why when people don't know a lot about astrology, they only know one sign. It's their sun sign. And that's because it's your, yeah, your ego, your unchanging essence. So, um, it, it's what enables you to make decisions in your life and direct your life. It's your core, your fundamental character. And another video might say it's like your boss. It's like the one at the helm. So that's why it's true that if you only know one sign of yours, it should probably be this one. But also important is moon. So moon is your... Uh, like emotional nature so your emotional nature your instinctive reactions how you behave when you are caught off guard um, and where your or what your greatest needs are too often. Um, so we'll talk about houses in another video, but your moon's house position, the house your moon is in, is the area of your life in which you're likely most emotional and experience the most changes. Um, yeah, so it's all of that, that good stuff. Then we have Mercury. So how you think. So um, it has to do with like communication and uh, information. So we'll do this and then say a little more. Means of communication. So when Mercury's in retrograde, that's why everything goes haywire. Mercury is in charge of communication, technology. Um, yeah, so in Mercury retrograde, everyone's saying they can't understand each other, and um, it's not a good time to have big talks and things like that. So that's why everyone's always talking about it in that way. Um, so yeah, it's how you collect, sort, understand, and communicate information. Um, and also, like, your style and preferences of communicating and learning. So it's an important one, too. But still, sun and moon are the most important. Okay, so we have Venus, how you love. Uh, it's like affection and attraction, I'll put. So yeah, how you express affection, how you enjoy the world and its beauty, your capacity to attract, you know, so the manner in which you attract others, um, how you appreciate the world and just enjoy life, basically. Then we have Mars, so how you act, ability to take action. So, Mars represents your physical energy, your sex drive, uh, aggression, um, and how you take your ideas and turn them into action. Then we have Jupiter. So, it's like expansion, I guess I'll put, but also expansion, but also luck. A lot of um, good luck, optimism, success, uh, abundance, and kind of mm, philosophical knowledge comes to us from Jupiter. So Mercury has to do with information, for sure, but it's more daily information, uh, like everyday stuff. And Jupiter has to do with um, 
information that's bigger than the day to day. It's philosophical. It's a uh, bigger picture type stuff where you're able to zoom out from yourself. So self improvement, how you fit into the world, um, and so where. So wherever your Jupiter is, like whatever house it's in, when problems arise there, you tend to land on your feet because Jupiter gives you good luck. So next we have Saturn, and I'll put structure. So Saturn represents limitations, restrictions, boundaries, um, but you know, safety, practicality, lots of not that fun stuff. Um, but it's good for us it, when Saturn comes. You know, there's a return of Saturn around when you're 30, um, and it it calls for you to set foundations in your life for the things that you want to pursue long term. And you, with Saturn, you have to work really hard and prepare a lot, but then in the end, um, that delayed gratification does come, and it's something that is strong and true and um, well built so it's not fun per se a fun planet but it gets us places then we have Uranus Uranus so I'll put change this is where all the surprise comes from sudden insights revelations, uh, like creativity spurts, imagination kind of stuff, um, and it forces a lot of the old out and like the useless stuff out and makes room for new and better things. Then we have Neptune, so I'll put imagination for that actually, because um, like if this is thinking about new, about other realms, like you get a flash of another realm in terms of your creativity or a revelation. As I said, Neptune actually is the other realm. Um, it makes the intangible feel real. So it also represents confusion, illusion, um, wherever it resides in your, whatever house it resides in, in your birth chart. You may have a lot of confusion in that area of your life. And, um, yeah, it also... So it's like movies, theater, art. Those are all otherworldly or of another realm to an extent. But also psychosis, addiction, um, daydreaming, mind-altering substances, all kinds of stuff. And then we have Pluto. So transformation... So it's transformation, um, like true upheaval, permanent changes in civilization even. And Pluto's so far away and moves really slowly. So a whole generation shares the same Pluto sign. Um, and that will inform, according to astrology, how that generation changes the, the world or what... Um, is asked of them and how they will remake things for better or for worse as a whole. And uh, Pluto also represents mysteries and secrets and taboos. So those are the 10 planets you'll see on your birth chart. And hopefully this little lesson on them will give you some more information to consider when you take a look at them so you can kind of see for yourself what's what's up all right i will see you very soon